and welcome back everybody to the PCS Summer. It is week six, day two. We're looking to finish out the, the regular split, I should say. Uh, but we still got about a day and a half worth of games to go. Before we get there, I want to once again give a shout out to our lovely sponsor, CTBC Bank, for always being by our side and making sure that the PCS is possible. Now we've got ourselves clash with quite a lot on the line for one of our two teams. Sem9 are taking on Beyond Gaming, who are hoping to move up the standings. And Clement, we crunched the numbers in the break. They have a path to get to get up into top four, but it is not an easy one. Absolutely, and you know, the most wins they can get is going to be 11 wins, and so far we have a whole host of teams already at 12, so they can't catch up to the top three anymore. Top four is the only open slot, but in their path is Frank Esports and J-Team, who um, you know, J-Team, one, uh, Frank Esports, one, uh, two games ahead right now, and J-Team still have a lot of games to play yet. So, it's not impossible, but certainly the deck is stacked against them. They need J-Team to basically lose all their games, and they need to ensure they win all the remaining, remaining ones of theirs. Yeah, it all starts today, right? They, they, they've got to beat Sem9, and I, I, you know, that's going to be the easy part compared to everything else is a lot of it's out of their hands. So they will be hoping they can move on up, but they may very well be our fifth or even sixth place team. Uh, and I believe that's the that's the lowest that this Mega Bank Beyond Gaming squad has ever actually done. So it just shows how much strength is actually at the top half of the table. And just like we were talking about last game, everybody yeah. has improved, everybody has gotten better. And Sem9 are one of those teams as well. So this won't necessarily be uh, an absolute team of pushovers, but they are just playing for pride at this point. They'd like to get another win on the board, and here they are in blue side this time around. No name, Arashi, Lazar, Jidoto, and Caspiel down in the bottom. So this is kind of what they've settled on, it, it seems. I mean, Asian is, is you know, back doing the pick bands. I, I like Caspiel in support. <laughs> I, I, okay. I will say that much. That's, uh, you know, not a bad look at things uh, i will say the biggest issue here is uh, are they going to commit to these lineups i i feel like that's an interesting question to kind of look at um of course after you know missing the postseason it's gonna be a long time since we see send nine again it always feels like almost half a year uh, so a lot of things can change between then and there um i hope send nine of course stay with us in the pcs um but the big thing is after they've changed back to this standard roster uh, they actually haven't found a win with this sort of lineup just yet. You know, the, the lanes themselves haven't been going too well, so hopefully they can do better against Beyond. Yeah, their opponents, Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, Likai, Husha, Minji, Wako, and Kino. I know we were we were talking about this lineup. They they have had a number of struggles, and, and it has been a little bit up and down during the split, but they've also been able to take wins off some big ticket teams. In yeah. the first game of the split, they beat PSG Talon. And this roster has definitely seemed to be the one they've stuck with. It's been much more Lee Kai than Leong. Uh, Minji, I think, has been able to flex a little bit more outside the comfort zone. You know, we typically had him pigeonholed as a main assassin player and thought that mm. post durability, he was going to struggle. He found some other champions that worked really well for him, the Silas, the Talia. Those are very, very good. The problem is, those are two champions that are very bannable. <laughs> Absolutely. And they're also first pickable, which I think makes things even worse for Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, especially if they fall on the red side. Uh, I feel like this team is pretty much dedicated to being a blue side team because their champion pool is pretty limited to start with, so it's actually just better for them to, to pick up what they know um, mm -hmm. earlier on. However, I will say they have been so incredibly dangerous taking games off PSG, like you mentioned, and also beating DCG yesterday. So you're not going to be too happy drawing them in the playoffs. They could uh, definitely be a threat to higher seeds. Let's take a look at our head-to-head. -head. It's going to be the jungle this time around. Arashi and Husha. Uh, Husha's definitely had a pretty big impact on some of these aggressive junglers as well. They share a similar pool, and, and that's because a lot of them have been playing some of the more standard stuff, with exception. Arashi has been known to pull out things like the Kindred, even had the Talon game as well. And mm. I do think there's upside to this player. Arashi, one of the better players on the Sunmine squad, to the point where we were talking about, oh, man, it's a shame we couldn't get him and Caspiel in the same game. Well, Sem9 found a way, uh, and we are into picks and bans. Away we go. It is interesting you mentioned Beyond being better on the blue side, Clement, because that is where they have had most of their wins. Six of them. Six of the nine at blue side, and I do think that is something to think about when they are on the opposite side of the rift. 
So there's a couple different ways that this draft could go. I would say both of these teams are very much focused on the Sivir pick here. Sem9 loves the rundown. They just showed us uh, my favorite comp personally this split, the no-name rundown Darius comp. Sure, it didn't work, <laughs> but it was fun to see. Yeah, some, some close moments right there. Hey, they're giving us some entertainment value, and you can't take it away from I No Name has played so many champions. Like, we have had the most interesting pool of top lanes, I think, this split respect. anywhere else. It's like everybody plays all sorts of champions, or they're just like incredible standouts, or they're just like rock solid on a handful of champions. Mm. Like, we have such a stacked top lane talent pool in the PCS, and also just some fun players. For sure here and you no know, seven nine we saw this draft yesterday as well they're, they're banning away silver counters uh specifically but we also have to remember that uh beyond gaming <laughs> uh there's no way they get first pick that i mean it would be a bold strategy it would they don't it's... they don't have anything to lose i suppose except this game and now nah, it's gonna be an R. first pick R, that's <laughs> all right all right no names. What the hell? This is a this is an interesting way to draft. I, I mean, they ban out the Sivir counters, and then they give over the Sivir priority to Beyond Gaming. Um, this could be a trap. There are some other Sivir counters, like we just saw from PSG, the Alistar uh, plus Tristana combo. Yeah, very very stall heavy, by the way. That's true, but I think those two champions specifically are much more about you know just <laughs> just playing up against there Sivir. We go. Beyond Gaming actually gonna let them off the hook on this one. Um, yeah. Very surprised about that result. I, well, I guess they just, they, they wanted the Ari's area a little more. <laughs> I mean, for Minji, the Ari is, is great, right? Like, it's definitely yeah. right up his alley. We, we saw what a fed Ari can do taking over a game last time with Deep Cross. And then Wako on his Ari, a, a very strong champion for him. He's actually gotten to play it four times this split. It'll be, it'll be his fifth. I mean, it'll, it'll make it his most played champion. And that really says something that teams tend to leave it open against Beyond Gaming. Stem 9 Great pick will here. just go for the uh, Lissandra lock and that's the neutralizing pick. And that makes a lot of sense when you're Lazar Zero versus Lissandra. Minji. There it is. Okay, Ashing is on the exact same wave wavelength I am, so at least these two picks he's got Ooh. nailed down. Okay. Oh, okay. Aurelia, let's go. That's that is something different. That's fun, but I'm not so sure about Weekai just yet. I to be fair that this is a matchup that can actually go both ways sometimes, and we have seen uh some Nars be able to etch it out. Favorite matchup of talking YSKM. They have made it work. We'll see if Lee Kai can too as well. It's been a while since we've seen Lee Kai absolutely dominate the top lane. Yeah, he's not really been on on the. I mean, he's favored the NAR, which is why I guess this was a takeaway on mm. Sem Nine. But like when he's been on other champions, it's usually been a little more utility. He had a couple of Glen games. He has had uh, you know a Fiora and a Camille as well. So this is in that same vein. But. I almost feel like this is just him saying, all right, I, I, I want to style on somebody. We're going yeah. to absolutely clap them because we are a better team. But that, it is a bit of hubris. And I think Sem9 could punish that potentially as uh, we see Rakan and Lulu, a couple of enchanters banned away by Sem9. And, uh, you know, it's hard to ban Sem9 in initiation champions because Castiel does play the Scion. So um, sometimes if they want to go fast, they definitely have a lot of options to do so. For Beyond Gaming, I, I feel like something like Lee Sin here is actually great. Alistar, Lee Sin, um, you know, Hu Xia is a great Lee Sin player, and this would allow a lot of early game pressure and tempo uh, to go forward. Also gives them a triple dive composition to play around with. For Sen 9, I think they need a little bit more engage. They can run really fast, but hard crowd control. Definitely great against this very um, vulnerable Beyond Gaming composition. Uh, all three of their carries that are being shown so far, you tag them with something, and they just kind of fall off, so um, I like this. It's a great follow-up option to the Lissandra. A pretty standard answer and takeaway here as well in the Viego pick. Yeah, I like it. I think some nine are definitely uh, giving beyond a heck of a draft. I was saying not mm -hmm. sitting in the player's seat does mean that uh, he can focus entirely on this. So. What's the last pick gonna be? Looking at that, rounding out the support, the Braum does make a lot of sense. Good pairing with the Stiver. Nice and defensive, and uh, they've got a lot of tools to try and get the setup, but ooh, okay, that Pantheon hover was playing with my heart there. That's a little early, 12.14 is when we're liable to see mm -hmm. that more. As uh, Husha does get the lease in at the end of the day, so some comfort there and a good setup. A lot of power, a lot of pop-off potential, but as you said, it's risky. 
Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think Beyond Gaming, for me, uh, I favor their comp a little bit more. Sem9, their engage is pretty situational. They have that, the Meganar, and uh, the Braum isn't exactly the best of the The Braum is more of a, uh, I would say, more counter-engage in, in most instances. So, Beyond Gaming, a very, very strong dive composition. They start off with Alistar, and then you have Ari just popping in on the flanks. Pretty hard for Shedu to actually stay alive in this one. For Sem9, they need to they need to start this fight first. If Beyond Gaming start this fight first, I feel like the Alistar just gives them way too many advantages, and they could easily get the resets um, on Ari and the Aurelia as well. So Sem9, they need to they need to be proactive throughout the entirety of the game. Yeah, they do, and I, you can see a little preview on the summer spells as well that Clem's already on for the Ari to kick things off, which does mean like, hey. Not going to let the denial come through. I, I think Minji definitely wants to try and get some highlight plays for himself. But also, that Lissandra, I think, is going to be very, very important if used correctly. Uh, trying to Frozen Tomb, one of those priority targets, somebody like the Zeri or the Ari, try and shut them down and let you uh, clean the fight up before they come right out of it. So that's going to be big. And you're right. Sem9 have to make the first move. They have to make the first strike. And they have to win it fast. For Beyond Gaming, whew, it's a lot of damage. A lot of tools, and I, I do want to keep my eye up topside because that really is the coin flip. Mm -hmm. And I want to see if Leekai can can etch his name there in the top side alongside all of our incredible carry players that we've seen this split. Absolutely. The scary thing here for Beyond Gaming is they have a dominant top side. If you look at the skirmishes, you look at the early game power spikes. Aurelia, Lee Sin, Ari, you can't get much better in drafting that triple combo. So um, you know, that's the inherent difficulty of a Sem9 uh, game plan is I feel like they are naturally put behind in lane by the picks, but then they have to find ways to be aggressive and proactive uh, when it comes to these objective fights. We're going to be taking a look at the summoners here. Minji going to go for a much more defensive setup, not taking the Electrocute or the Ignite here. Just going to be... Um, I, I honestly feel like this is a little bit too defensive in my mind. It's it's always hard to yeah. snowball. I mean, he's this. got the spell book, though. In, in fairness, he's not going to have to deal with it forever. Yeah, so I, I think what this shows you is that most likely Beyond Gaming going to look to just hard camp Lee Kai. You know, if you don't, not, you don't really get the combat key stone or summoners in the mid lane, you're probably going to focus on top. Makes a lot of sense. We'll see what the game plan ends up shaking out to be. As we get underway, Leash is happening both on the bottom sides of the map and Arashi. We did compare the junglers, I think, very fortuitously this game because they should have a pretty big impact. Husha almost always does. I remember back to Spring Split, this guy was popping up out of everywhere doing things like, I don't know, Rek'Sai. Just getting big plays in the mid lane. And could be possible that he's going to try and help snowball Minji a little bit, but the top lane, that would be the focus that I would expect to see. And I think for Arashi, maybe they can make a play down on the bottom. Caspiel finding some good Winter's Bite onto uh, Awako there. And, uh, you know, level one, pretty common to see this just being pushed in on the side of Alistar. So, Sem9 gonna have a good start that way. And take a look at the jungle pathing here. Uh, Husha, very interesting, actually going for the bottom side instead of the top. Leekai hitting level two first. Oops. There we go. Good dodges out from No Name, though. I, I think No Name is uh, gonna have his work cut out for him. Talked about his Darius game, didn't quite work out, but you gotta give him credit. No Name is uh, definitely able to at least tangle Ooh. some of these top tier top laners. Also, touching around. This is the interesting. Engine. I think they just see him. Yeah, they have to assume that uh, Husha could be in all places here. A really nice pathing from Husha. I'm not sure if they know the ward was there, but okay, he's finally gonna show here. Yep, there we oh, go. I should be overjoyed about that. <laughs> Good, good information shown early on in this game. Arashi, yeah, both junglers just kind of been matching Cadence across the board. No more shenanigans, but now with Husha on the level three, I think we can expect to see that play you were talking about coming soon. Yeah, it's a straight trek into the top side, and No Name should know about this. Good sight. Uh, there we go. Nice. There's the hop. He does take a little extra bit of damage. Just moves out of the range of the Sonic Wave, and he is able to stay alive. All summoners to boot. Arashi getting more time on the jungle, so he's a slight bit ahead. Yeah, does get an extra camp there. You know, No Name definitely knew that the Lee Sin was coming, so 
He was on high alert, and we have an interesting roam from uh, Seven Diamond's bottom side. They had the pushing lane against the Alistar from the start, and we also had Beyond Gaming's uh, bottom lane playing pretty safe because they didn't know where the Viego was, um, and Lisa also into the top side. So a good find here by Sem9. This is this is always where it gets exciting when you see Sem9 coming out of their lanes doing just fine. Absolutely. Lucia? No name, almost on that Narvar, but Husha is back oh. and around as he cancels the back. I think this could be a little bit of a rough timing. Ooh. The hop, the crunch, and oh, there we go. First blood. Husha's going to claim it on the execution. Yeah, beautiful stuff coming in from Husha. He got the red buff slow, and even though no name was able to get the W right off the bat, doesn't really help him afterwards. I uh, feel like he could have saved his flash in that one. It was a dead man, and uh, if you look at top lane, yep, this is where he's at, you know. <laughs> your mid bot are all defensive summoners. You might as well try to snowball these guys instead. Yeah, and and this is the thing about about picking an R. Like, yeah, sure, it's a takeaway from Lee Kai as he's just played it so many times. But it is situational. You have to play well around the bar. You also have to be careful of not going too far forward. Otherwise, you risk falling behind and against a carry, a snowballing carry. A level advantage Lee Kai already has here. Does get a nice trade off with that boomerang, but. There's so many dashes. The blade surge. You have to be careful. And you can see that No Name already taking pretty defensive stats. Go back. Goes back. To pick up the call. I actually feel like No Name has had, you know, very good positioning throughout most of the the trades that we've seen here. Like he's been able to dodge out on Lee Kai, um, on the uh, on, on the E for the most part. The only one who didn't dodge out was the, the Kank, unfortunately for him. Um, but the positioning and just the, you saw the nifty footwork there to walk past Lee Kai and get, get the double hop through. I actually feel like No Name has been a very solid NAR player. Yeah, I think it's it's going to have a lot more value as the game goes on, right? You, you can tell he's mm -hmm. definitely looking to have that impact later, the cold buy. You know, you want to get that gold for later item buys down the line. And everyone else on Sun 9, they're going to try to hold out for a little while. You know, they have neutralizing picks, defensive picks. At least they have a pushing bottom lane, but we'll see if they're able to execute on it. Busha, you go for the wraparound. I don't know if he was spotted on that control ward, but he's played just around the edge. Now he is. This is something Sun 9 have done really well, is tracking the lease in. I haven't seen any ganks just yet. Um, uh, actually, we did see one top, sorry. <laughs> uh, outside of that, though, since, right? Like, yeah. This is... Six minutes, you expect to see at least in like have like two or three ganks at this point. So they've they've been able to hold him. It's not a bad start. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, I think we're getting to the point where Sem9 do have that frozen tomb combo online. So they could uh, choose to use that on the uh, most likely the top side. I think both sides are going to go for the top without the plans. Okay. Jitoto's taking a little bit of damage. You can see Caspiel actually getting stunned up, and they. We'll get a little zoned out of lane for the time being, especially with Husha sniffing around, actually soloing onto this Ocean Dragon. Something he can do is the Lee Sin. Really Completely nice uncontested. Oh, just great trading by Waka. He goes in and he also picks a moment where Shidu and Caspiel are not stacked together. So we didn't see the uh, we didn't see the Guardian actually being proc right there. And now we have Beyond Gaming going for their patented 4v2 play. Let's see if 7 9 can sniff this out. No pings just yet. Arashi is going see and now they late. spot it. Yeah, here we go, into the headbutt pulverize, nicely comboed, and what a beautiful execution. Caspiel will survive for the moment, but they've already de-aggroed on the tower, and oh dear, they're gonna go in, look for the execution. Arashi already a little bit too late to the party, the double kill comes through for Wako, and Arashi, he's just gonna be fed right in for another one, that one claimed by Husha. Kino tanks another tower shot, but they get everything beyond gaming down bottom. Oh, it's just such a beautiful execution to watch there. Everything was used to perfection. We had to come in WQ combo onto Shedudu, make sure that he cannot spell shield anything, followed up into the charm here. So Shedudu actually pops his spell shield way too early. Kino sees that, he gets the two man onto the WQ. Absolutely beautiful. They reset the aggro, walk back after Caspiel has the um, has the, the door down, and then they go in for the chase down kills. Arashi, he has that heartbreaker, and he doesn't even get to use it. That's just so yeah. beautiful by Beyond Gaming. Yeah, I, I also think Arashi probably should, the moment he saw that it was going to be, like, at best, mm. 2v4 extended, he should have walked away from that one, left Caspiel to his fate. But, Beyond Gaming, they capitalize, they get two kills 
now second on to Husha and two more on to Wako, who picks himself up the Noon Quiver and uh, boot upgrade as well. So Zeri already off to a flying start. Husha's going to be a threat, and Beyond Gaming, man, they, yeah, when they pull off those those four man dives, it's just it's beautiful to watch. And they always love to do this when Alistar is level five. Usually people get pretty alerted when Alistar is level six, but level five, mm -hmm. a lot of times they let down their guard. I've seen this play from Kino a number of times. Let's see if he can pull it off. There we go. Uh, Lazar is going to move away. L Lazar did a bit of a quiet lane, um, mm. which I think if you know he's going to be pretty happy about that, but. His job is to try and neutralize somebody. He hasn't really had the opportunity there. Yeah, I, I think it was pretty bold of you, Clement, to say that Enzo is the best support uh, potentially in our league because, yeah, it, it's it's another stacked pool, right? Like, Kino, can't forget, this man, oh. he was uh, he was quite a lot of the reasons for, for some of Dago's successes in the laning phase, and now he's doing the same thing for Wako. True, but I feel like this meta is not really in Kino's wheelhouse. Uh, if you look at the picks that he's great on, career-wise, Leona and uh, Lazar, oh. where are you? What, what are you doing? Uh, he's trying What's to dash away, but no, following through. <laughs> well, it may not be his meta, but it certainly is his champion here. This Alistair paying up huge dividends as Wako claims yet another kill. And meanwhile, believe to look for more. Arashi going to be isolated here as he gets tries flash. to walk through the Vanguard's edge. They do get the flash out. Mm -hmm. and Harold taking claim. They don't even need to go for the kills. Beyond Gaming, five unanswered. Yeah, I'm not sure what Lazar was doing. If Beyond Gaming is missing, they're clearly doing Herald, and the bot lane is walking up. So, I, just, I feel like that was just an inexperienced mistake coming in from Lazar. There's, they're almost guaranteed to be right around that corner. So, he gets picked off. I, I don't think he should have been there anyway. Um, and that's going to be the mid lane tower traded for only two plates in bot. Yeah, really good trade. Beyond Gaming now. 4,000 gold the lead as they put that in the bank. Lazar... He got caught in a ward clear and just completely gets decimated. Even burns his flash, but Kino, eyes on the prize, follows him through, body blocks it out. Nowhere for him to go as that stasis ends. And oh boy. Beyond are off to the races here, Clement. They're looking pretty good, feeling great about their opportunities. This is a must win game, of course, to try and get a better position in the standings. Hope for a better playoff seed than they're aiming for at the moment. And I do want to say they're still in the running for a perfect game. I, I know it doesn't mean all that much, but it's, it's always true. fun to keep track of. <laughs> it's true. They got they got the dragon. They got the tower. They got five kills. Nothing answered by Sim9 just yet. I believe Sim9 did get perfect game earlier the split, too. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but... I it was either that or it was awesome. Dewish teams. One of those teams. <laughs> Might have been by the other. Could have been Dewish team. Oh yeah, we remember. I remember that seven nine game where they almost crushed you team without a without getting up a kill or something. Yeah, it was close. It was very close for sure. Marco gonna get Marco's stunned. actually caught. Okay, but there's no follow through. I mean, mm -hmm. another thing about Zeri, you can you can threaten the mobility, right? You can always go over the wall with Spark Surge, and now Kino and Husha are here, looking for another collapse. Mm -hmm. uh, wave is cleared though. Shidudo with Kraken Slayer, a little bit more of a threat than before. I think uh, Shedudu is using his spell shields a little bit liberally as, uh, I'm not sure he's going to get that one as Ari comes in. That's a very long cooldown. Shedudu just has to back out. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, you feel very safe with the Sivir because of the spell shield, but if you use it, all of a sudden that tool's gone. It's a very long cooldown. Mm. As you mentioned, you have to be careful here. So Lazar sitting on an award, so is Arashi, but at least aware of it and clearing that one away. And Beyond Gaming have absolutely no fear as they move into the 9 jungle. Well, Lazar Charm actually tries. Lance onto the Viego. This is going to be huge. They get the combo, and Arashi stays alive for a little bit, but Wako tries to finish him off, does actually manage to cleanse out of the exhaust, and they just start picking off Sem9 members oh, into no. the second tier tower. The Meanwhile, flash? we got a split-screen play because Lee Kai and No Name were duking it out, having a battle of their own. Oh, Minji with the prediction on Caspiel. Caspiel gets caught after the flash, walks back in, and gives up another kill. So... Beyond Gaming, just full court press. They're gonna take this tower down. They're gonna take the Drake. This looks like a, a pretty tragic ending to Sem9 split so far. Just uh, no damage on the team to get anything back. You can tell that Arashi is trying to rush for uh, heavy damage builds by going for this Blade of the Ruin King first. Uh, and Clement, we're still on track for the perfect game. It's gonna be a uh, second brick as well. We already had that first in the mid from the Shelly charge and that's pre-plate fall. Mm. Oh my God, two level difference here between Wako and Shia Dodo. 
That is a fed Zeri. Yeah. Fully completed, uh, I mean, it's the boot difference, but he hasn't even backed to buy. Now, no name that Narbar is praying for, but can't quite find it. Likai opens up, finds the solo kill with the Blade of the Ruined King. You know, Caspiel might even find each other, but that's not going to make too much of a difference. 14 minutes are about to ding, and Beyond Gaming, still on track for the perfect. Plays don't count. I I'm really trying to think how Sem9 can find a first kill, but it seems so hard at this point because, you know, Wako, the most fed member, starts the Immortal Shield bow. He's well protected. He has his own cleanse. We're going to take a look at the top side trade here. No Name already down to half HP. He gets tagged by the big jump. Allows Lee Kai to reset the Q. It's actually a fairly simple chase down. But one of the most OP things about Aurelia is just how long her auto attack range is. It's actually a 200 range with those floating swords. Which means that she can get that uh, Blade of the Ruin King stack really easily. Caspiel caught off oh, yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Uh, once more, Caspiel gonna get shredded through pretty easily. They can even get the stun oh, with the charm. charm. CC City here on to Sem9. Only Lazar is going to be able to get out, uses the Ice Claw to do it, but he is not going to be the win condition for this team. It's a glacial path, but to where? I, I don't think victory is the answer. 15 minutes still on track for the perfect game. Teleport comes Lee in. Kai, don't you throw this? Outnumbered here. If he does, you don't want to be the first member to lose. 1v3. And Likai going in, finding Jidudu. 1v3. I think he might be out, though. No, by some back time. In. Dashes, Blade Surge is still going. Gets the kill. He will not go down. The Aurelia outplay. The cavalry has arrived going forward. One, two, three kills. Beyond game. It's still on the board. And Sem9 shut out. Oh, Likai was so close to giving Sem9 hope right there. But the... Calvary squad here from Husha arrives, gets the shield down, and look how happy Lee Kai is about this situation, you know. We have to oh say boy. that for this guy, this split was not a guarantee that he was going to be the starter, though. We had a couple games from Gyeong coming in back in, Lee Kai finding his stride, getting some confidence before postseason. I'm definitely happy with him. Yeah, no, took a very aggressive matchup into the NAR and has definitely shown up. And like here, you have to think he's a dead man. Yeah, he's got level advantages, but through the teleport, you see he's trying to back away. Jidoto looking to cut him off as well, but he just has so much power. He's so much sustain. He buys a ton of time, burns through Jidoto's spell shield. He knows help is on the way, and all he has to do, yeah, perfect. Just nails the two member flawless duet, and it's away we go. Oh, those skill shots landed were so important because it gives him the reset on the Blade Surge, which also gives him healing. And he was able to uh, stay alive, get that Conqueror proc over and over again, did 4,600 damage. Is, is it care is it fair to call that a team fight? It was it was 1v3 and then he had allies. I, yeah. I feel like this is a bit of a bamboozle on the graph. It, it was more like a 3v3 gone back gone wrong but oh man Lee Kai's damage through that just the amount of resets he got that was really fun to watch yeah this is Aurelia man uh it's I, I feel like it doesn't matter how many years pass every time this champion comes back into vogue you kind of look at it and be like those numbers are bonkers guess what better nerf Aurelia don't let Morello see that play please nobody <laughs> send it to him nobody this is a very old old league meme by the way uh, again we were, we were talking about cursive earlier it's, it's from about the same era Absolutely. we're doing throwbacks tonight it was kind of funny, man. I, I was in the, I was in LPL in the China office, and uh, um, our, our PM was the actual person. He said that he suggested the Aurelia members. Really? Yeah, yeah. Ah, that's a fun, that's an interesting point, thing. Uh, it was a really good player. He was a Trindamir player, and he did not like Aurelia. Oh, well, that explains it. That explains <laughs> everything. Yeah. Caspiel. Oh, oh my goodness. Big man. three man knockup. Oh boy, Lazar trying for a play. They don't want to get perfect game, but Lightning Crash might say otherwise here. Wako is unstoppable as he looks for the extra hot one. Lazar will finally find it into the back line. Lee Kai is not going to let himself be outdone by any AD carry. And all of a sudden, Arashi, the last man standing. 18 minutes. We might be in for a record setter here as it's 18 minutes and they're breaking the base. Shelly's coming up inside the base. Are we going to get a Rip Carol dancing tonight? Okay, we need to get two. Uh, historical records at the same time. Nobody died, get a perfect game, also the fastest game. Come on, Beyond Gaming, you can do this. Okay, Shelly taking the damage. Looks like the charge. That's going to be the last hurrah, but this is going to be it. 18 minutes and 20 seconds. An no, absolute die, slaughter. Kino. Kino. Kino doesn't die. They Kino just need to end it on the Nexus right now, but they want to pad those stats. Kino flashing away. The Nexus will fall, oh. and it's a perfect <laughs> game at 18 and a half. Oh, and Beyond Gaming 
get a two for one. Perfect game versus Sem9. Also the fastest game of the split so far. I was just, I, I have to say this is perfectly played from them. Um, the big difference here is just the amount of roams that they were able to do on the top side. We knew that the top side was likely not going to go so well for uh, Sem9 based on their fix. But the way they shifted into the bot side, the way they had that beautiful four-man dive where they got three clean kills and no one even low on HP was just such a... It was so entertaining to watch them juggle that act. Yeah, it really just showed how well a team with Beyond's caliber of talent flex on weaker opponents. The setups were just perfect. Sometimes Telegraph were just perfect. And they execute... A perfect game. 20 unanswered kills. 18 and a half minutes. Damn near a dancing rift herald. That would have been the trifecta, but they didn't quite get it. All the same, <laughs> they don't lose anybody, Clement. And I, I was not expecting the record setter. It is unfortunate for Sem9 that they just couldn't get anything going. But beyond gaming, they needed to win this one for standings yeah. to try and get themselves a better seed. But they styled on Sem9 today. And there's a couple things I think we can look forward to. You know, Likai pulling out the Aurelia really shifts a lot of focus around in the meta. Nar is still our most successful champion, so if you have someone that can play against it at the counter pick, a lot of times you're going to catch those Nars off guard. Kino going back onto the Alistar was Chef Kiss. If you just watched the way he tower dove that one in the bot lane, oh, it was so fun to watch. They, they burn the spell shield first. He gets a double knock up before the Braum can even go. Uh, into the stand behind me, he pulls out, drops aggro, waits for the Braum shield to go down, and then they go in, kill the Braum, and then you still have uh, Husha with the kick and the execution ready for a rush. That was just beautiful sequence, beautiful stuff, and a lot of important picks still coming out for Beyond Gaming. Yeah, if you're Mega Bank Beyond Gaming, uh, if you're a player on that roster and you want to make a highlight reel, this is like the first game you look to. Just like, all right, I'll give me a little bit of this, give me a little bit of that. I'll take that play over there. I love the the, the flash uh, headbutt pulverized three member that was in that jungle that pretty much ended the game. Mm -hmm. That was massive. I, I think Kino, I mean, honestly, I, I think he deserves the MVP for this game because while there were so many great plays from everybody, he set up all the big engages. You can see that a player like him it is so much more comfortable on these big beefy engaged champions yeah. and you know last spring it was a lot of like leonas and things like that and now we're we're kind of coming a bit full circle to some of these champions that can have an outsized impact to set up these fights to set up this burst i think the meta is definitely getting a lot more fun yeah we're getting pantheon support in the next batch which i'll be honest Ooh, maybe maybe jungle too i mean pantheon's definitely He's back everywhere. somewhere I, I will say i actually don't like enchanters i feel like enchanters are kind of boring i i like the metas where there's no enchanters and everyone is tank engaged support how and dare you, you. i love me a little aggressive support <laughs> yeah if you can yeah. flash forward and get knockups okay that's good for yeah. you but the rest of the lose Never mind. And that's why I said, like, I feel like en en uh, Enso is the best support because his Renata and his Nami are out of this world. I really can't say the same for um, for Kino, unfortunately. But as you said, the meta is changing. You know, the next patch, we just still got the Amumu. Pantheon's in there. He's shown that he plays the Alistar. And Leona's always been there. So, yeah. Beyond Gaming already. I'm, I'm so excited as as beyond. I think the, the winds of change are shifting in their way. They still have a long road to go if they want to get themselves into a top four position. And they need a lot of things to blow their way as well in terms of other teams losing. But this was absolutely a statement. A perfect game and the record setter. 18 minutes and 35 seconds. I challenge any PCS team to top that. Yeah, 7-9. They only have one, late, uh, one game left, so... I think it's going to be hard for anyone to, to kind of top this record. It is it is against Dewish. Uh, we'll see. True. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, let's, let's take a look. Let's see who won the MVP. It was going to be Kino. Absolutely. What a day for supports. 0, 0, and 12 involved in 60% of them all. And the ones he wasn't were pretty much just uh, Leak Eye up top or yeah. down by. Just straight up solo kills right here. And I, I think Kino's always been most comfortable when he's on these tanky and gay supports where he can open vision for the team, where he can start to roam around. Uh, the tankier the, the champion is, the better he looks out on it because I feel like Kino is um, he's his great engager and he knows how to section off team fights as well. So Leona Alistar being back in the meta, 
something like Pantheon coming back in is also super interesting. I feel like, you know, Kino, as someone who's been known to play a lot of set support, uh, Bruiser's coming mm. into the support role is going to be fun. I knew I was missing something. I was like, there's something yeah. else Kino's known for. I cannot wait. Man, 12.14 <laughs> is going to be such a banger, but we've already gotten some huge starts here, and we've gotten some incredible games today. Man, if there was ever a day, like, at the end of the split, even from some of our squads that don't have anything left to play for, we've had quite some entertainment. We have a few more games coming up. Yep, right afterwards, you know, Impunity versus PSG. If you guys are looking for an upset, that one could still happen. And uh, surprise, surprise, we got some old faces going back to the roof. Uh, Onyx. Ooh, yeah, we do. <laughs> Little preview there. We're going to go on cooldown when we come back. We'll see if PSG can bounce back from earlier today. Don't go anywhere.